Features of this cook is Janet's Grits Alicante. Very good. We're going to enjoy this. Hey guys, Phil and Florence. Well, today's Friday, so I'm getting my cook in today so I can watch college football tomorrow. Clemson's playing Boston College, and Carolina will be going down to play the Vols in Tennessee. So they're about even Steven on the season so far, so may the best team win. I'm going to be putting on some chicken thighs and some spare ribs. I might just leave them whole and not cut them and just do it that way. We'll see how that works out. I'll be using the Weber kettle today with the slow and sear. I got another little thing I'm going to put on that uh, kettle. I'll show you in a little while. Uh, you know, we have a special guest today and you haven't seen this, this person in a long time. I thought she'd given it up, but... We have none other than Jeff. Hey. <laughs> what you got for us today, Jeff? Okay, today we're going to do a dish that I've been wanting to show you for a while now, and it's called Grits Elegante. And if you don't like grits, you might want to give this a try because it's uh, very special, I think, and it's so yummy. So right. I'll show you how to make that. Super simple. It's really good. So we'll show you how to do that. All right, well, we'll see you in a little while, Jeff. Okay, bye. All right, we got two packs of these spare ribs and we've got chicken thighs from Costco. I'm just gonna rinse them off, pat them dry, put a little salt and pepper. We are getting ready to get started here, so hang in there with me. We'll be right back. Daddy always taught me more is better. So the more you can leave on, the more you're gonna eat. And I'm not trying to make it look pretty. I just want to clean up. I'm just trimming off some of this excess fat and this little flap. You know, get a good uh, boning knife. And uh, I'm going to cut the end off. This is just flappy and real thin. I'm going to come up right here between this first and second rib, and I'll just cut that off and square that end up. You can't grab them with your bare hands. You have to get a paper towel. But anyway, it's good enough for me. Okay, I'm going to be using Rocky's Rub. This is by what was Adrenaline Barbecue. Now it's SNS Grills. This is a fairly new rub that they've come out with since about April doesn't have any salt so I'm gonna be going on with some kosher salt okay I'm gonna go on with some mustard as a binder all right let's go on with some salt here and I like pepper so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put some black pepper along with that rub I know the rub has some pepper in it but I just like a lot of black pepper and then some Rocky's rub. That's pretty rub. All right, that's gonna be a pretty rack of spare ribs right there. Okay, there you go. Uh, I'm gonna do the other rack of ribs and I'm gonna get this chicken cleaned up, these chicken thighs. I'm not gonna show you that. Chicken thighs are chicken thighs, right? And I'll meet you outside at the Weber Kettle. I just want to do a quick mail call here. I got stuff piling up on me and I'm afraid I'm going to forget something or somebody. I've had some other YouTube cooks send me something recently in the last few weeks really. And uh, I'd like to show you. First, Scott over at The Real Show Barbecue, he's 
developed a new rub. He's actually showcased it in the last couple of cooks he's done. And uh, he sent me some of it. He doesn't have a new label on this one. This was just for, for me to test it out and see what I thought about it. And I think it's a real good rub. And you can see him using it here in the last couple of cooks that he's done. And so Scott, I loved it. And matter of fact, I used it today. So thank you for sending this out. Uh, speaking of rubs, I got another package here from a good friend and fellow YouTuber. And that would be Joe over at Joe's Barbecue House. He sent me out some more SPG that he's made and some of his chicken and pork rub. Nice label, Joe. And this looks real savory. It doesn't have a red look. It has a savory look to it. So I'm eager to see what this uh, tastes like. Uh, and I'll be using it in some upcoming cooks. The next one is a box full of goodies. And I mean, this guy is a guy that's been pit cooking barbecue for who knows how long, maybe 20 years. But uh, he sent me a little note. Look at there, you know who that is. It says, guns up. Get those guns up and enjoy this barbecue sauce, popcorn, and candy. Take care, Skagit. And some of you know Skagit. That's his channel name. And uh, name's Eddie. What a super guy he is. He's, he's one of those who blazed the trails of uh, YouTube video. He's been around a long time and he's got hundreds of videos out there. So go check out Skagit. And he's a big Red Raider fan down in Texas. So he sent me first off, and most of this stuff looks like it came from a Red Raider shop, the Texas Tech University and uh, two bottles of sauce. I've already tried a little bit of this one, Skagit, and it's delicious, I love it. It's just a good traditional hickory smoked sauce. Goes good on anything barbecue. I'm gonna use that today. A big old bag of panhandle popcorn. It's probably real popular down in that area. Uh, and then Goodert's peanut patties. Look at that, it's red, believe it or not. Red Raiders. <laughs> We're gonna enjoy that, Scott. Get sitting back watching the ball games. We'll have to up bust this thing open. And I guess it's like peanut brittle, candy. You know, that's what peanut brittle is. Last, but certainly not least, I got a buddy, a YouTube buddy that uh, when I first started YouTube, he started watching my channel. I didn't have but like, I don't know, two or three videos. But he has supported me, he's encouraged me, and I just appreciate this guy. You all know him, most of you know him. All the YouTube cooks know who this guy is. His name is Ken. He's the Lone Ranger, the masked man behind the camera over at Heavy Metal Barbecue. Recently, he sent me out a nice package, and man, it was nice. From, he sent this to me. This is the elevated cooking grate from Adrenaline Barbecue, which is now SNS Grills. So if you wanna pick you up one of these elevated cooking racks, and that's nice to have for extra room. Uh, it sits right on top. This is for Weber 22. It also works on the new Kamado series that Dave Parrish is, uh, is offering now over at SNS Grills. And so I'm looking forward to using this. Matter of fact, I'm using it today. So thank you, Ken. And along with that uh, elevated cooking rack, he sent me out some of Dave's new rubs. And uh, I'm using Rocky's rub, some of that today also on some of the ribs. Those are my mail calls for today. And I appreciate every one of you. And I thank you for sending these gifts, and I'm going to enjoy each one. If, if y'all don't know any of these channels, um, Joe's Barbecue House, The Real Show Barbecue, uh, Skagit, and HMB, Heavy Metal Barbecue, go and check those channels out. 
And while you're there, subscribe. Enough small talk. Let's get these ribs to cook. Okay, guys, we'll be using the slow and sear today for a low and slow. What I'm going to do is light about a dozen briquettes. We're using Kingsford Professional. There we go. Okay. We've got a few spent coals over here I'm going to use during the cook. And after these catch up and get nice and hot and gray, we're going to dump more unlit charcoal over here to set up for the low and slow. And I'm going to put the rest of this over here and just let it roll over to the lit coals. I've got a couple of chunks of cherry wood. i just stick it right down there. There we go. First rack is going right here just like this. I'm going to go with this second rack. Oh yeah, that works good. That's a good thing to have if you've got a 22 inch kettle. Normally we don't use the probe on ribs. We just do the bend test after three hours in. Pull back on the bone. I'm going to keep this in here because I'm going to be doing some chicken later on. I'm just going to stick it right there. I'm going to be using it on the chicken later on. We'll put the chicken on in a couple hours. I forgot to do. Put the water in the water trough. So. And this is hot water. Got about an inch left on the trough. There's my setup for the two racks of spare ribs. Hey guys, after I put the lid on, I swivel my lid around over the ribs and the elevated rack side away from the coal so the heat and the smoke will come roll up over and that cherry wood smoke will roll over those ribs and out the vent. And as I monitor the temperatures, uh, I just put the lid on. You can see the temperature in the pit is 165 and rising. So as soon as it gets to about 250, I'm going to trim this lever here all the way back to, I don't know, like a quarter open. I'm looking at about three and a half, four hours. Looking the whole temp inside the pit at around 250, 240, somewhere along in there. Guys, after 17 minutes, my uh, pit is at 273, so I'm going to trim this back. I already had it on about half. I'm going to come on back to about a quarter cracked open and bring that on down to 245 or so. Okay, guys, it's time to spritz and it's time to put chicken on. I've been cooking around 250. Guys, here's what I ended up with. I, I swapped ribs, put the one that was on the top on the bottom. Looks like it's cooking a little hotter up top. And I put four chicken thighs or five chicken thighs down below and three up on the top. Everything's clearing. Let's see how I did that? And these are wider racks of ribs, guys. I didn't trim the spare ribs, so they're taking up a lot more room on the racks than normally would. Let's go another while longer. I've been cooking at about 250. We're just going to leave it set up like that and see what happens. Hey guys, two hours and 16 minutes in, I decided to go ahead and wrap these ribs. I got the color I want, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap them in some aluminum foil and use butter honey and brown sugar you know the usual all right stick with me right, we got the ribs wrapped and ready to cook some more got my time stack going here. Ribs have been on three hours and 35 minutes. The chicken's been on an hour and a half and the uh, ribs have been wrapped 
an hour and 11 minutes. What it comes down to is time to sauce. So let's open everything up and get some of that Red Raider sauce put on everything. Guys, the cook's over. We've got four hours and 13 minutes total cook time on these two racks of spare ribs and two hours and 10 minutes on the chicken. They've been unwrapped and sauced in the sauce setting for 20 minutes. So let's go in and take these up and see what they look like. Ooh, that's looking good. That's pretty. That sauce looks good on there, Shoggy. This elevated cooking grate off. It did a good job. Rack of ribs is looking good too. That's pretty ribs. Pick this chicken up. Looks good. The uh, charcoal I had left, it's right good bit. I'm gonna snuff that out and use that on the next cook. Slow and sear did good. There's our ribs. Two racks of spare ribs. Untrimmed for the most part. See how wide they are? Mm-hmm. Turn that good. Meet you inside. All right, guys, it's time to taste this meat. Let's see what we got here. Mm. Yeah, remember, now I didn't trim these spare ribs up to a St. Louis cut. I just left them, I trimmed a little bit. You saw what I did. Let's just go in right about here and see what we can come out with. Oh yeah. I'm gonna let Jeff do the taste test on the ribs. How about that? Reach in and grab that when I cut cut out for you, Ooh, that's Janet. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, Tell it's me really what. Hot. <laughs> First, turn it sideways and let me see what we we're working with here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty color. Uh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. And that's using that red Raider sauce. I like that color on it. Okay, go for it. Uh, Ooh, bite mm -hmm. through, not falling off the bone. Mm -hmm. how, about so the, how about the flavor? Mm, it's great. I love a sweet rib, and this one is, and it's it's just right. I love it. Okay. You did an excellent job. That's Rocky's Rub and Skagit's Red Raider Sauce. Great. That's great, a good com <laughs> Good. That's a good combination right mm -hmm. there. Oh, she's gonna she's gonna just go right on down the bone. It's great. All right, we've got a Ooh. piece of chicken. Okay, Janet is going to try this chicken thigh. Tell me mm -hmm. what you think. Mmm. Mm, it's so tender. So good. Great flavor. Mmm. You did an excellent job. All right. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to try me a taste test on something, but it's not going to be the meat. It's going to be grits elegante. Right. All right. Stand by. All of you guys that live up north and out west that hate grits, you got to try this recipe. <laughs> I'm going to go in and get me a spoonful, a clean spoon, and I'm going to come out with it and not going back in. It is hot. <laughs> yes, it is. But that sausage and Rotel and what kind of cheese? Velveeta. Velveeta cheese. And half and half. And half and half. This is not your average grits. Now, I like grits, just plain grits, the salt, salted good with butter. But this right here is on another level. All right, I'm going in, boys. There. All right, I've already told you, Janet's told you, make this recipe. If hey. you don't think you don't like grits, you just try this. Right, and also remember, you can add shrimp to it toward the end That's of the, right. the cook of it. Any size shrimp Any you size want. Any size shrimp. It's awesome shrimp and grits, and it's so easy, it's so simple, but it's so tasty. So just give it a try, it's so good. Okay, guys. This is Friday. Tomorrow we're going to watch college football all day. I'll have my cook in for the week. Mm -hmm. 
and go Cocks. And go Tigers. And go Red Raiders. Guns <laughs> up. That's for you, Scott. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you on the next cook. We're going to dive in. And this is... Phil and Florence. And Janet and Florence. That's right. Okay. See you later.